Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market prep video for November 8th, 2022, midterm election day. Please remember to get out and vote and exercise your constitutional right. Well, yesterday we had an interesting day with a rally going on. It, it struggled to get going. The diamonds just kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And that finally lifted the SPY and QQQ out of a intraday consolidation. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Tuesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, and thank you so much for being here. I do appreciate it. Let's take a look at these charts and see if we can figure out how we might want to approach the market for today. Clearly yesterday we rallied pretty substantially here in the Dow, and it was the Dow 30 that lifted the rest of the market, and it struggled to get it done there for a little while, but it finally lifted the QQQ and the SPY out of kind of a midday or a morning consolidation choppy range um, as our bond yields continue to rise but our dollar was falling so um, if we take a look here at the chart here of the diamonds you'll notice that we're pressing back up into this long-term downtrend in the chart and though we rallied up pretty significantly late yesterday we want to also keep in mind we are approaching a very significant level of price resistance in that Dow chart. Not only the downtrend, but the resistance in, in uh, price resistance in the chart here uh, as we continue to stretch this Dow up. Now, what's interesting about this is if you take a look at the Dow itself, we're over 1,100 points from that low just three trading days ago to that high. And as we continue to stretch up here, it really is the Dow lifting the rest of the market, just the Dow 30 stocks doing uh, the majority of the work. So keep an eye on that. And if we take a look at our technicals here in the chart, we breached that 200 day moving average again, and we've got that 500 day moving average above here in the chart. We are extremely extended away from our 50 day moving average as we continue to press and press and press and stretch the Dow in this attempt to continue this rally going. So watch that carefully here as we approach that downtrend and those big uh, technical levels in the chart. If we were to take a look at our SPY, well, not nearly as bullish there. We rallied up um, at the uh, after we broke out of that range. If you'll notice in here, we were just kind of stuck um, in this range um, of the day yesterday. And then we finally started to lift up out of that as the Dow continued to push. But as you can see here in the chart, what we've done is we've rallied right into a fairly significant level of price resistance in the chart. We're up here testing that level, seeing whether or not we can pop through that area. Obviously, we are still downtrending here overall in this chart. So we'll want to keep that in mind. And as we approach these levels, if the bulls can engage and continue to push up, well, maybe we can press right up into this level here in the chart. If those bears re-engage, just remember, it's a pretty substantial point fall just to come right back down just to that last support level, making this a relatively dangerous place to be jumping in or chasing in because the stop could be so far to the downside and we know the capacity for this market to produce some really substantial whipsaws and um, with that potential and knowing that we have a big day of earnings a big day of data on the election front I think anything is possible so I would exercise a little bit of caution here today um, maybe not get caught up in um, all of the hype and trying to rush in here um, just just think carefully about how much risk you're taking um, with all of this data coming our way. Um, watch that closely. And then if we take a look at our um, technicals here, we just peaked above that 50 day moving average here in the chart. We've got quite a few moving averages right in this area, along with that price resistance of the chart um, and downtrend showing us that um, significant level that we're going to have to work through. Now we certainly can do that. Lately it's just been 
um, all hands on deck to press and press and press us back to the upside. But let's watch that pretty carefully with all the data we've got coming our way. And then if we take a look at our QQQ, well, QQQ is still the weakest of the bunch. And you can see in here that we've still got some significant challenges. Um, QQQ pressing up to significant levels of price resistance. And if we can push through this area here, I want you to notice just how significant that is up here. We continue in a substantial downtrend here in the QQQ. Now, what that does tell us is our downtrend, we're so far away from that downtrend level. If we can get some um, momentum going, we've got a pretty good upside potential if we can get that momentum going and break through these resistance levels but right now if we look at those technicals of the chart we're still pretty darn weak here in um, the Nasdaq and if you're checking out those bond yields bonds uh, bonds continue to add additional pressure here to the Nasdaq and they keep going up on us um, as that um, inversion um, in the bonds um, we, we've largely ignored that here um, recently. Um, I think that might come back to bite us here just a little bit if that situation continues. So watch that closely as we push up. Notice we're still underneath our eight exponential moving average, even with the push that we have here in the pre-market this morning. Let's take a peek at our um, IWM. Now the Russell has also been very, very strong. And I think one of the technically stronger um, index charts right now, but we still have our problems too. We still have that substantial downtrend in the chart. We still have significant overhead resistance that we need to defeat. And if we can push right back up in here, it just gets even stronger if those bulls uh, continue to push. So we'll want to watch that pretty carefully. But what we do have is we do have a trend that's working pretty good here in the chart. We didn't break the trend like we did in the other indexes. That upside trend, we kind of held on to that. We held on to a price support level. So if I had to say the technically strongest or technically most correct bullish chart right now would be the IWM, um, but it does definitely have some challenges above overhead, so we'll want to keep a close eye on that. Our VIX has been acting very, very oddly here recently. Um, it's really showing no fear at all um, as we continue to squeeze to the upside in really low volume um, yesterday, quite low volume. We'll look at that again here in just a second. But pressing back down, and we've got to give this up to the bulls. They've broken down below that 25 handle in the chart. That 25 handle area is a very significant level in this chart. So we're just seeing kind of an interesting situation as our bonds continue to rally and all of this data coming our way that there's just no fear and we've gone in such a straight line to the downside it does make me worry that that big whipsaw could happen in it at any time so be kind of careful and be prepared in case that were to occur but if they can continue to press down well maybe we test these levels down in here um, as we continue to push to that upside um, all be it on some pretty light volume. If we take a look at our T2122, our T2122 is also indicating maybe we're stretching into a little bit of a problem again. Notice that we're pounding right back up here toward that um, uh, a bearish reversal zone in our T2122 suggesting that we're reaching a bit of an overbought condition here and with the data coming our way this wouldn't be a normally that big a deal um, we do you know obviously we've done a lot of this lately but um, the concern I have is how the market may react to these election results and, and, and a huge week of earnings. So we're going to see quite a little bit of volatility in, in all likelihood, which means as we stretch up here, it means that we could catch that really nasty whipsaw, punishing whipsaw, if we uh, chase too many things long as we push up into this area. So you'll want to keep an eye on that. But you will want to make note that if we can find that reason for bullishness, we certainly have some room still yet to go to the upside before we kind of extend that into that serious uh, condition. And we ha obviously have a pretty big um, opportunity to the downside um, if 
if those bears find reason for inspiration. If we take a look at our uh, T2107, T2107, whoops. There we go. T2107 had a really good day yesterday, continuing to stand on up. 38.5% of the stocks holding above their 200-day moving average. As you can see, we're pressing into a resistance area in here. We've defeated this big downtrend. So I got to give this one up to the bulls. Um, I do want to suggest that we might be reaching a bit of an overextension here in the short term. So you want to be watching for that potential. And then our T2108 also had a good day yesterday, stretching up. It didn't take out that last high, which I think was interesting um, as the um, uh, T2107 did. We've broken that downtrend. We've held it as support. So I've got to give that up to the bulls for sure. Um, once again, we're kind of reaching up here into a bit of an extension. So we'll want to watch that carefully. 61, almost 62% of the stocks above their 50 day moving average kind of stretching that pretty hard here. So we'll want to be a little bit careful in case that whipsaw does come into play. Our T2101 continues to show that extension in this move as that momentum for the upside continues to pump in here on that market um, with buyers just slowly stepping in. And I mean slowly, if we take a look at um, our volume in the SPY yesterday, very, very weak. QQQ, um, astonishingly weak as we rallied, but there was all of the energy was in the Dow um, pushing up. So we're, we've got 30 companies in the Dow really trying to lift or support all the other indexes here in the market. So that's where that whipsaw could be pretty substantial if it does occur. And I'm not saying it will. I would just say the situation is set up if, if we do find some bearish reason in the market or the sellers start coming in, it could move to the downside pretty quickly. So be prepared for that. If we take a look at our economic calendar for today, well, we've got virtually nothing on the calendar to be particularly worried about. We've got an NFIB small business optimism report, which doesn't move the market. We've got some bond announcements and we've got a three year note auction later on today at 1 p.m. Um, just really nothing in here on the day, which is probably a good thing considering the number of earnings we have today. We have a very big day on the earnings calendar with a lot of potential notables. If you make sure and click the link just below the title of the video, that'll take you back to those notable uh, videos or notable um, stocks here today. First off, I'll run through a few of them. We've got um, Disney um, will be reporting today. You'll want to keep an eye on that. We've got DDD, the 3D systems out there. We've got um, a meme stock, AMC. Um, we'll be reporting today. Um, we've got Blink. E-L-N-K, don't have to spell the whole thing out. Blink reporting today. We're gonna hear from some oil. Um, Warren Buffett's a favorite here where he bought up Occidental. That's looking pretty good here this morning. Looking to the upside, we've got um, Ride reporting today. We've got um, Plug Power on the list for today. We've got Planet Fitness reporting. We're going to hear from Upstart and we're going to hear from Win Casinos. So keep an eye on all of these reports today. There could be quite a little bit of volatility um, around these reports this morning. So watch that close. So with that, how about we take a look at some stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me this quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, if you could please do me that favor and that would be please click that thumbs up button and leave a brief comment and boy by the way I just want to say thank you to everyone who's leaving those comments and then also going through and thumbs upping um, the other comments on the channel that helps 
that engagement with uh, the video. So it helps the channel to continue to grow. And I just want to say thank you so very much. We just um, last night went uh, 29,200 subscribers. So slowly growing there to the upside. Thank you, everyone. And also, please feel free to share this video out on your social media feed if you think it could be helpful to other folks. Let's take a look at some of these stocks that could be setting up. And let's keep in mind, these are not recommended recommendations to buy or sell any security. You've got to do your own due diligence and be very, very careful in this market because we've got quite a little volatility and there's a few things out there that are just showing a lot, a lot of pressure like they could suddenly just snap and go um, in an opposite direction. One of those being um, the dollar. If you notice, the dollar um, has been pulling back. Now, this morning, we've got a little pop here in the dollar to the upside. Now, that, at least in the pre-market, the dollar has been one of those, in, in the pullback, has been one of those real helpful things for the rally. So if we see the dollar starting to catch some support and maybe rallying back, that could play out out to be a little bit bearish for the market. And it's also having some remarkable effects on um, commodity prices, one of those being energy. Energy just continues um, this surge to the upside. Oil and gas continuing to go up, adding more and more potential pressure to that CPI number coming out on Thursday as um, as we continue to see energy and food prices climb. Um, and every time we see that dollar decline, we can expect those commodity prices to continue to move up. Take a look at some of the precious metals out there. GLD has been trying to work out this bottom here in the chart. Now it's not quite ready for prime time, I don't think, but you can see we've pumped through that downtrend here. Um, if we were to hold a higher low in here, watch for that opportunity maybe for gold to take off and silver has already kind of made um, some of that move viable as you can see in here breaking through um, a bit of this downtrend pushing up into some price resistance so keep an eye on this if that dollar continues to sink then I would expect to see um, silver moving on up to the upside and you would also want to take a look at copper copper has been making quite a move here as you can see pushing up in the chart we're pressing through this resistance level we gapped away now a rest or pullback in here would set up an opportunity off of that trend so we may have to rest for a while but keep an eye on that if that dollar continues to weaken and there'd be reason for that because we continue to see Japan and China working pretty hard to improve their currency um, right now with some operations and that is having a negative effect on the dollar so watch that closely now other places that you might want to look in the market um, take a look at um, stocks like um, by the way I have a little bias on this because I picked up a position in this yesterday uh, Valero Energy uh, that refining sector we know that we have a major diesel shortage and our refiners are are running at um, actually some of them are running at over capacity they're running at 102 percent and things like that to produce enough uh, to meet demand but as you can see we've got this upside trend I chose to go with Valero here um, may end up eventually regretting that you never know but you know other places you could go uh, for the same kind of thing take a look at like Halliburton very stretched up here that's one of the reasons I didn't choose that yesterday it's really stretching to the upside. Halliburton may be one of those charts. Uh, Schlumberger uh, may be one of those charts that you want to take a look at in that refining sector as um, we continue uh, to show um, incredible shortages in energy um, around the world. As a matter of fact, the North uh, the northeast of our country is now looking at um, heating oil and diesel shortages to an extent that they are doing some um, um, uh, rationing um, in the northeast because to prevent um, some panic buying going on so kind of an interesting situation developing here as we approach winter and a real cold snap coming here to the country so watch that closely now other places you might look take a look at um, some of the 
um, uh, different retail out there. We've been all over the place in this retail um, um, sector, but take a look at Walmart. Walmart holding in an upside pattern here, holding into a consolidation zone, showing some bullishness here and maybe have that opportunity to continue filling this gap to the upside. You might wanna take a look at stocks like Dollar Tree continuing to rally up. Some of the discount retailers may have some upside opportunity if the market uh, continues to show weakness here. Other places you might want to take a look at some defensive sector stocks, those food related stocks. Take a look at Coca Cola holding a higher low in here. Now, I would say short term, this trend is pretty darn steep and may not be able to hold it, may need more consolidation or rest in here. But looking at that chart, we certainly have that possibility that we could. Um, hang on in here, rest back, and continue to move to that upside. PepsiCo is also showing lots of bullishness in here, as you can see, pushing on up, trying to break through some resistance levels. Also saw some uh, pretty interesting moves um, in some of the insurance sector stocks. We've just been shooting up here in travelers and notice that we're up here testing some resistance in the chart. So this has that potential, it could go either way. We could break through that resistance or we could reverse here on a lower high and end up being a short trade but very extended positions and a lot of charts out there. How about some of the industrials? Let's take a look at Caterpillar. Caterpillar continues to stretch to the upside, which is really remarkable because Caterpillar has such a strong tie to China um, and China's economy is weakening so substantially. It seems kind of interesting to me that we are stretching this rubber band so hard. This is a parabolic move to the upside. So as we test these resistance levels up here, I certainly couldn't rule out the possibility that this could pull back and pull back substantially or at a minimum consolidate. But at the same time, the way we're acting in this market right now, I certainly couldn't rule out the fact that we push through and continue to extend um, this chart here in Caterpillar. And I do think it's interesting when we see other stocks in the same sector not performing near as well as Caterpillar. We've been really piling into it right now. Uh, Boeing is another one where we have stretched this rubber band so thin as we're pushing back up here to this resistance as that Dow continues to push and push and stretch trying to um, uh, convince everyone to buy, 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 but we're uh, we're seeing a lot of those stocks in the Dow in a very, very extended condition. So be kind of careful there. Possible uh, bear call credit spreads or things like that might be doable in these charts. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. Remember, get out and vote exercise that constitutional right get out and vote we have a very big election going on here um, a lot of things at stake so make sure you get out there and uh, vote your conscience um, with that everyone hey I want to wish you all a fantastic day be a little bit careful remembering that we could have any kind of reaction tomorrow morning you know I've spent a lot of years doing this and thought many times that I could kind of predict how the market would react after a midterm uh, or any election and usually I have been um, tremendously disappointed and found out that I cannot figure out how the market's going to react so be very very careful we could have big reactions in the market tomorrow morning that will just be handed to us and there won't be much we can do about it so with that guys have an awesome day I want to wish you all the best and we'll see you right back here bright and early Wednesday morning